Welcome to My Security TV and the Cybersecurity Weekly Podcast. And joined, uh, well, this is a sort of a link between Sydney and Melbourne, and we're joined by the Milestone team, uh, Brett Hansen, the South Pacific Country Manager, and Mike Metcalf, Manager for APAC Key Account Team. Gents, thanks for joining us. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Thank Very you. good. Chris. Thank you. And it's good to have Brett back. Uh, we met sort of earlier in the year. We released a podcast with Milestone. And uh, we didn't quite appreciate what was coming before us at the time. Uh, we were talking about uh, the, the Dubai event uh, and, and the like uh, as well. Um, so this particular episode, we're going to talk about uh, COVID-19, Milestone's involvement with smart cities, smart buildings. They're obviously in the video management system and the platform uh, space. So they do a lot of very interesting things with a wide range of partners. Um, Brett, maybe introduce uh, yourself and Milestone and maybe even more importantly, where you are, you're in the Experience Centre in Melbourne. Yeah, thanks, Chris. And it's uh, what a what a different world it's been since we last uh, we last caught up. Um, so, yeah, I'm uh, I'm down in Melbourne in our Experience Centre, given the um, the ability now to travel for the the time being um, mm -hmm. and utilise the Experience Centre, which is you know for a good part of this year has been underutilised given uh, people's restrictions yeah. in travel. So. Uh, yes, there's been a, a large change in in what we can uh, expect from not only uh, in our day to day business, but in our you know in, in what society is is going through. So a, a massive change. Um, what uh, and, and maybe Mike as well. Your, your role and uh, yeah, your sort of expertise in this area too, and what uh, the Experience Centre is bringing uh, in terms of your role with the key accounts. They're able to come in and. Uh, sort of understand what they're going to get before they deploy it, right? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's an opportunity for them to come in to experience what the Milestone Expertech's open platform is really all about and how it connects these different technologies uh, with the various solutions from our technology partners. And the Key Account team works in a APAC solution sales group. Uh, and part of that, that group's daily tasks and initiatives is to engage with more and more technology partners and focus our energies on um, really empowering the community to embrace these new technologies and how they can integrate into the Expertech platform. So they have that freedom of choice in building and scaling their solutions based on needs that arise. And particularly, the, uh, I think the COVID situation really spoke to how we had to adapt uh, as, as, uh, as organizations uh, and as, as people in the global communities. One of the key things, and we're sort of seeing it in the background there, is the sort of people people tracking, uh, and then you've also got things like traffic flow management. Maybe just talk us through some of the key capabilities that have been deployed around COVID-19 that you're actually seeing, and uh, maybe also the gap between what you think you're able to provide and what the customer, where the customers are. Are they ready for this, uh, or is it already getting deployed uh, rapidly as people are starting to plan to get back to work? Well particularly where we've seen a big ramp up of a lot of these technologies going in is uh, in EMEA and quite rightly so. Um, they seem to be experiencing or, or trying to get on top of this pandemic. So using things like traffic flow management, spatial uh, awareness, proximity tracing um, to uh, integrated with access control systems from a contact tracing perspective as well. So in smart buildings, they're able to manage the amount of people that are in that building and also uh, you look in large retail spaces and restaurants and that sort of thing, managing people coming into the facilities, but also managing when facilities need to be cleaned. So, you know, simple things like in, in, in the retail spaces, rather than having scheduled task teams that go in and clean these spaces or manage these spaces, they can actually do that based on the amount of people flow metrics. So monitoring that and being able to have that information on hand, they can now automate and, uh, you know, make better use of the time of these teams that go in and, and frequent these places and clean these places as well uh, to keep everybody safe. Are you finding a, sort of a, a client profile? You're, you're in there with key accounts. Is there any particular client profiles or applications that are sort of in, in front, you know, retail, re, you know, uh, restaurants and the like, or, or larger retail, or even in the sort of the manufacturing area as well? Mm. Very good question. Primarily, it's the public spaces. So right. your retail uh, as restaurants and bars and all that sort of thing start to open up. But also in critical infrastructure, manufacturing and mining as well, where 
not only are they trying to do the, the contact tracing, uh, but also the proximity awareness, the amount of people on site, scheduling their teams to come in and perform actions as well, but also uh, PPE and, and monitoring of equipment, making sure that that's all in place. Uh, the obvious thing like face masks and facial mask protection, um, you know, being able to be alerted or notified if someone walks into a particular area where they have those, should have those face masks, and if they don't have those face masks on, to be notified about that and, and having that immediate call to action to manage the situation. Uh, again, uh, keeping everybody safe and just abiding by sort of the new laws that are coming out around this this space and, and, and keeping these spaces safe and managing people in your space. Um, for existing customers as well that are already using sort of an Alstein platform, is this just an add-on uh, with some of this capability or will it already have it? Uh, you know, what, what, how would they sort of go about deploying it and actually start to, to benefit from it, particularly say local government? I mean, you, you guys are sort of everywhere in any, any vertical you're there. Um, yeah, where, what, what do customers have to do to start to, to be benefit from some of these applications? A large amount of our customers have reached out to us and said, you know, within the extra tech platform, we understand the scalability possibilities that we have. We understand that it's open. What have you guys uh, got in terms of being able to address spatial awareness, being able to address contact tracing? Um, and through this year, we've done a, a large amount of effort in building these different technologies uh, as, as lead technologies that we've had. So we've been quite capable to direct them to partners either in territory uh, or global partners that have expertise in things like face mask detection and automation of those, doing, being able to do things like audible alerts. So the Milestone team, the CBMs, the key account team, the solution sales group, our technology partner community managers have been able to connect a large amount of our customers, more so this year, I think, than we've ever seen in previous years with technology partners developing these, uh, these solutions that address these needs. There is some it's very uh, clever applications coming through, uh, particularly around COVID-19 and some of those, the, the sort of the people tracking, the counting, as you say, uh, you know, even down to queue counting, as, as yeah, queue uh, monitoring uh, and the like. For the responsible use of technology, Brett, we spoke earlier in the year about facial recognition and uh, the the way the position that milestones taken in relation to the responsible responsible use of technology uh, given the power you know when you start to, to track people as we are in this pandemic environment uh, the importance of safety and security maybe just walk us through uh, milestones position with that and maybe a bit of an update on on how that's been perceived this year yeah it's a really interesting point chris because um while the the outcomes that are required now are urgent and the the need to return to some form of COVID normal and the requirement there is urgent. It's more, more time than ever to be focused and have underpinnings like GDPR and have a focus on that and have still that focus on um, the Copenhagen letter mm. and the responsible use of technology that outweighs what that outcome um, is required by that organisation or that end user. And it's good that you've signed or been a signatory to that Copenhagen letter prior to this situation. And I think, you know, rather than doing it afterwards and, you know, uh, sort of being potentially perceived uh, in, in the wrong way, I think, yeah, you've been out in front with that. And as you should be uh, as a sort of video you know, management uh, sort of platform, uh, people need to be aware of their privacy. Um, what is the sort of the link here, do you think, between say, some of the tracking apps versus the power of video technology and the analytics that sort of sit behind all that? Is there a way that they should come together or do you think maybe the apps aren't necessarily as required in a workplace when you can integrate the video with access control and the tracking? Is that sort of supplementing, supplementing that or is it going to be replacing it? Um, I think in, in they could be either or. You can actually supplement the existing infrastructure or the existing applications and enhance it with uh, other beyond security approaches with video. So it can be an enhancement, it can be a replacement where required. So it's got the flexibility to do either or. Right. Well, in terms of access control, um, the proximity awareness, uh, maybe just talk us through some of the integrations that you're seeing with access control while we're there. 
Sure. Mike, did you want to cover that? Absolutely, yeah. So the access control applications in themselves as they are out of the box uh, have very good reporting capabilities where you're able to manage uh, and understand the movements of your employees, the schedules of your employees, what areas that they access, what areas that they frequent the most. But there's other integrations that actually tie in or extend that where you're able to do more sort of health safe type reporting on the actual access control movements and management uh, of those personnel as they move through the places. Before we used to video verify access to areas. You know, is the particular person that has access to that area actually going into that area or is it someone skimming their card, using a card, whatever the case is. Now we've taken that to a completely different level where we're using it to manage our employees, manage our spaces better, schedule time, schedule teams when they can be in there, team A, team B, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, those sorts of things. And those contact tracing uh, reporting and those health safe integrations uh, that are out there uh, enable organizations to better manage their people, better manage their team, but also in the event of uh, a, a COVID type situation, having that information at the ready on hand to be able to uh, get in touch with those groups of people or teams and notify them uh, and just manage it a bit better. So it helps them build their COVID normal uh, schedule and plans and processes that all organizations now need to seriously consider and have in place. Yeah, one of the, the sort of themes of this particular interview as well was the, a smart city or a smart precinct. Uh, I can definitely see the application in a more of a controlled environment in for building. How can this be applied in a precinct environment and maybe by a local government or, or a city government? Yeah, how, how do you bring that together uh, and how would Milestone integrate with, with some of its partners there? So in the precinct, in the smart cities types of environment, you know, managing things like, I guess, temperature identification, not so much alerting or taking that as gospel, but te temperature identification, I think could certainly help. But as we can see, things like uh, access in areas and uh, frequent crowding in areas, groups of people, being able to have zones and identify the amount of crowd density allowed in those zones, if it gets over to a certain period, having automated announcement schedules on uh, city deployed speaker systems. So um, please maintain your so uh, social distance. There's too much of a crowd in this area. Please wait to be escorted. Um, having, I mean, we've seen uh, the increase in law enforcement on the street, also trying to manage these sorts of uh, spatial and social distancing type scenarios. So being able to actively in near real time monitor that and be alerted on that and have automated announcements around uh, too much grouping, too much crowd density, not enough proximity, those sorts of things, I think certainly aids in having a safer environment in communities. And government organizations using the ExpoTech platform, again, uh, as we know, have that capability to expand on their system and not straight away deploy it, but actually test and trial what might work in their particular environment rather than jumping straight into it or being thrust straight into purchasing something that says what it can do and it might not fit their application yeah. entirely as they need it. To. Well, it still needs to be configured as well so for each of those environments. One other, how adaptable is it? So here in Sydney, we've just gone from four square metres down to two square metres. So, you know, that needs to be calibrated back into if, if the system's being used. How adaptable is this? Can it be phased in and phased out and, and adapted as, it, as it's being applied? What we've actually seen is technologies that are able to set the proximity distances and those can be changed. It would be an adjustment that would be made. But if you need to say two meters to four meters, for example, you can do that and have that as a real time alerting. It's not something that's set in stone. There are other AI applications that can actually learn what is normal in a particular area and alert when it is abnormal. So are we too close? Is there too much crowd density? There shouldn't be this much in this particular area. Let's alert on that. Let's notify on that. So there's a range of different applications. And again, as you rightly pointed out, fit for purpose in terms of the situation, but also uh, an aspect of configuration and, and, you know, setting what is normal or what is considered acceptable for that particular environment. Yeah. Well, what's uh, 2021 looking like uh, for you and Milestone? Um, I take it you've gotten through the challenges and you're just happy to be back, big smiles, uh, to be back in the Melbourne Experience Centre. Um, how does 2021 look uh, or are you going into the year 
pretty much like the rest of us and just hoping for a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, there's a, there's a little bit of that. Yeah. But I think we're very lucky in this in this region in, in Australia and New Zealand that uh, I think our, uh, our government authorities have managed the crisis particularly well. So we're, we're very confident that 2021 uh, should be a lot more positive for, for us um, as a business, for our customers, our partners and, and our friends and family. So we're, we're looking forward to a great 2021. Very good. Any, any key events uh, that you might have in the pipeline or kind of just holding that at the moment? No, we are. Uh, we had. We do have our MIPS event coming in 2021. It will be a virtual event yeah. just due, because it's an international event. Um, there is that limitation in travel, so it will be a virtual event. So that'll be coming in the early new year, and we're looking to do um, a, a local MPOC event towards the end of the year for our local partners, local customers. Australia, New Zealand, or Correct. yes, yes. Correct. New Zealand. Hopefully, that travel bubble will be open for us to to, to allow for that. Very good. One of the other things, if I may just comment yeah. as well, from a technology partner and community growth perspective, we're going to be doing a large amount of uh, technology information days with the various technology partners, and those will be going state to state, and we're very excited to be able to do that again. Um, it's an initiative that we started with a large amount of our partners in 2019, and of course, uh, that was thought of this year, so we're excited to bring those up again, where we can educate the market on different technologies and of course now with these new COVID technologies being able to present and demonstrate those uh, in you know in, in, in person with guys so they can actually see that on hand and of course we're going to be driving those technologies into this experience center as well and we welcome we look forward to welcoming the visitors coming down and, and being able to take a look at that and experience that. Very good well look what we'll do we'll have Brett's uh, last podcast in the show notes uh, we'll grab some more pictures I think or even some videos from the Experience Centre if you can, and we'll put that into the show notes as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll sort of catch up and monitor Milestone in, in the new year as well. Uh, do enjoy your Christmas, and hopefully it's a safe one for you and your families, and obviously being there in Melbourne, you've come out of a, a challenging year, but uh, you're leading the way now, so it's all, all good. Um, look, very much do appreciate having Milestone back on. Brett Hanson, the South Pacific Country Manager, for APAC Sales and Mike Metcalf, the manager for APAC Key Account Team. Gents, thank you very much and appreciate uh, the setting in the background too. So very interesting. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Great to be part of it. Ciao. Cheers.